Hi, Mike here with another Badonski Buccaneers video fishing report. This one is from Saturday, October 1st, 2016, and with clear skies and modest winds, my wife Teresa and I decide to head offshore to find a mixed bag for the fish box. But first we need to locate some live bait to add to our arsenal of frozen cigar minnows and squid, just for a variety offering for any finicky eaters. For this, we use a light spinning combo and a sabiki rig. Common baits we catch out here are scaled sardines, cigar minnows, and blue runners, also called hardtails. Once I've found a few small blue runners and a couple cigar minnows to put in a live well, we make a run out to the 12 mile buoy for our limit of king mackerel. The 12 mile buoy is the NOAA weather buoy about 12 nautical miles south of Perdido Pass in Orange Beach, Alabama, a popular spot which not only holds bait but also predators. While I was messing around with the sabiki rig trying to find a few more cigar minnows to put in the live well, Teresa, being anxious to fight a fish, had already rigged up one of the twins. Our pin offshore spinning combo, which we'll look at later in Mike's tackle box, she baited it with a frozen cigar minnow and in short order hooked a decent sized king mackerel all by herself. King mackerel being a target species along our area of the Gulf Coast can usually be caught from around April through October as long as the water temperatures are above 70 degrees and you can use a variety of tactics and baits to do so. Teresa sure was doing a fine job of putting this small king on the boat. Way to go Cookie! Okay now it's my turn. Using our Motor Guide XI5 GPS trolling motor, we lock onto a spot within casting distance to the buoy and toss a bait close to but down current of it and freeline the drifting bait with the current, typically getting a strike in ideal conditions within seconds of the cast. We are using a standard King Mackerel wire leader rig as terminal tackle to catch these fish. These popular King Mackerel wire leader rigs can be bought at your locally owned tackle and bait stores or you can make them yourself. They're basically a 50 pound swivel on about 3 foot of at least 40 pound wire leader with a 2 aught J hook, then about another 3 inches to your 3 or 4 aught treble stinger. You can also dress it up if trolling with a colored skirt. Another popular spot for King Mackerel is trolling live baits around the Baldwin trolling corridor. This is when you might use a skirt or duster rig to dress up the bait to help entice a bite. This might require more time invested to get a strike, but the results may be more productive with larger fish being caught. But today we're more interested in quickly getting our limit and moving on to the next target on our agenda. Having put four kings in the box, we move on to the area of the nipple, about 19 miles further to our east, to try a little trolling. We find clean water and lots of flying fish but would not have any strikes on our trolling spread and we saw no feeding birds, no weed lines or other floating debris. So we decided to head back to the edge and do some bottom fishing. This area ranges to almost 200 foot depths and features a long drop off which reaches as much as 20 foot at times and can be clearly seen on your sonar. It's a popular spot for catching a variety of bottom fish including snapper, grouper, and jacks. You might also commonly find king mackerel, mahi, and cobia if you throw out a drift line while bottom fishing in the summer months. We are using mostly cut squid on chicken rigs, also called dropper rigs, commonly used when reef fishing or bottom fishing smaller species. Teresa is using her Shimano Dakota reel on a six foot star rod. We found these Dakotas to be versatile reels for both light duty trolling as well as bottom fishing. I'm using my old Shimano Calcutta reel also on a Star Paraflex rod, but we'll look more at these rod and reels on Mike's tackle box in a moment. It takes a little moving around, but we find a more productive spot for desirably sized vermilion and also pick up this colorful Cuban hogfish, which I safely release. While fishing here, we also had a brief visit from a small hammerhead shark. He didn't hang around long, circling the boat at a distance twice before leaving us. We tried tossing a couple of chucks of bait in to see if he would come closer for a decent picture, but he just wouldn't cooperate. He must have been camera shy. Next, stay tuned for Mike's Tackle Box and we'll look closer at the rod and reel combos we use today to catch these fish.
Hi, Mike here with another Mike's Tackle Box, and I want to take just a second to go over the rod and reel combos we're using today to catch those fish. First up, and I know my regulars will get tired of hearing me say it, yeah, the twins are Penn Spin Fisher V8500 series reels on the 7 foot Blue Water Carnage rods. These rod and reel combos have been a real go to for us from everything from pitching baits like out there at the 12 mile buoy to catch those king mackerel all the way to jigging up Big Amberjack out the Allen Wreck like this time last year with my buddy Mark. These reels are really solidly constructed, have watertight design, plenty of drag, a lot more than we used to have with those old Penn 850 SSMs. I've been really impressed with these since we bought them a couple years ago. This is a real good consideration for anybody looking for a good offshore spinning reel. Also, the Shimano Takotas. This is a 700, we also have an 800, and the only real difference between the two is line capacity. The 800 has a little bit wider spool. Other than that, they're almost identical. My wife mainly likes it because it has the level line feature. She doesn't like thumbing that line across there when she's reeling up. And these have been excellent reels for both bottom fishing like we did today, as well as light duty trolling. And we've caught many a mahi and black fin tuna off of these down in the Keys. I've also put a power handle on this to help uh, some of that fatigue in the wrist and the hand whenever my wife's pulling up, especially like today when we're fishing about 200 foot of water. I've paired this up on a star Paraflex rod, six foot, roller tip, and I like the roller tips because if we have a friend on board that's using these, it's a little bit more forgiving if they forget about that swivel on the end of the terminal tackle before they stop reeling. Anyway, these Shimano Dakotas are excellent reels for anybody looking for a reel in this class. Now, my old Shimano Calcutta 700. Now this is an interesting story to it because this was a reel and a lot off a boat that my friend of mine bought and he wasn't really interested in the rod and reel so he sold them to me real cheap. This was in that lot and it was really abused if you can tell by all the damage on the outside. We had it reworked, totally rebuilt. I put a nice power handle on it and I have a lot of fun with it using catching at those bottom fish like we were doing today. I've got it on a seven foot star paraflex rod. It's got a slightly softer tip to it. And like I said, it's just a lot of fun to use catching those smaller bottom fish. Anyway, I promised I was gonna make this short, so I won't do any longer. I just wanna thank everybody for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for our next show. Thanks, God bless, and y'all have a great day. We had a great time out on the water today. We caught lots of fish like this grouper as well as a decent size Alaco Jack. That about wraps up this report. We hope you've enjoyed it and found it entertaining as well as an informative. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.